The history of enslaved African Americans has been well documented and much of it began in the port city of Charleston. But there's another story, a story of pride and perseverance, a story of faith and freedom, and it happened here in South Carolina. This is the untold story of the Low Country Gullah. Africans that ended up in the Low Country did so because of the similarities to their homeland in West Africa. That whole western coast of West Africa has similar food ways and speech. Between Senegal and Sierra Leone is a good guess for Gullah people. The Gullah Geechee Heritage Corridor runs from the Sea Islands of Northern Georgia to Wilmington, North Carolina. And what made this area unique for enslaved Africans is that they were able to retain their culture more so than other areas of the South, all because of a mosquito that came over on the African ships. The Europeans had to leave because of malaria. The malaria season began in about April and lasted until about October. You know, we had little Africa along the west, I mean, along the, uh, the sea coast here in South Carolina. Little Africa, little West Africa existed for over a hundred years uh, without any interference because people, people just couldn't survive the mosquitoes. So people who lived here, you know, pretty much didn't, didn't have to bother with anybody else coming for a long time. That's one of the beautiful things about the culture, the fact that you could pretty much be yourself. Uh, everything that you did was pretty much your own culture and it, it was kind of a happy life. But people always believed that they could make it with the help of God. And that, that, that was really um, something very important. That's why you have the churches. That's why people went to praise houses. Every, the belief in God and belief in your neighbor and how to treat your neighbor was uh, most important. They were still enslaved, and in order to communicate privately, they developed a secret language, one that the Gullah Geechee speak to this day. Even the spirituals were used as signals to each other. When people wanted to liberate themselves, or wanted to, through, through, uh, through a message, they would sometimes send it through songs, or through a sermon. And uh, these were secret code that even the master doesn't understand. Wade in the water it was a signal to, you can wade in the water and, you know, the hung out with, could lose your trail if they're trying to chase you. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let it shine. It could have been a could have been a signal that you're gonna have a, a lantern or something. Harold Tubman came into this area before the Union came in. Mitchellville was established by the Union after they captured Hilton Head in 1861. In 1862, shortly after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, the Battle of Port Royal gave the Union Army control of Hilton Head Island and that was to be the first step toward freedom. They came out here and they put the flotilla of ships up here and they did what they called the Ring of Fire. They just sailed in a circle, fired at Fort Beauregard and Fort Walker. This is the north. This is the north, okay. the Union Army. Union General Ormsby Mitchell proclaimed that the land the people had once toiled under, the chains of slavery, was now their own. Good people, you have a great work to do, and you are in a position of responsibility. It seems to me a better time is coming. A better day is dawning. These industrious new citizens built homes on neatly arranged streets, elected their own officials, developed laws, built an economy and implemented mandatory education for their children. Shortly after, a trade school was constructed just north on St. Helena Island in Beaufort. This institution gave the freedmen a chance to decide their own path. It was a fully functioning school with male and female dorms, a cafeteria, and a gym. Today, you can go see the original artifacts like nursing uniforms and reconstructed dining areas as well as some famous dwellings. And this is Dan College. This is, where, this is where Dr. King, Jesse Jackson, and all his staff stayed when he was working on the streets of Washington. Well, today, the Gullah's direct descendants continue the traditions of their ancestors. You can see the evidence in their sweet grass basket weaving and colorful works of art by Jonathan Green and other painters. There's African-inspired sculptures and some of the most beautiful and vibrantly colored quilts painstakingly weaved by the Gullah. And people around the world love Southern cooking from places like Gullah Grub or Dye's Gullah Fixins. And there you'll find some fried chicken and collard greens prepared just the way the Gullah used to fix it without a bunch of fancy spices, but with some salt and some pepper and some sweet potato fries. It'll taste just like it did back in the day. So take a trip to the Gullah Geechee Corridor 
and learn more about the dawn of freedom and equality in America. Because people come from all over the world to see, you know, and, and hear about that culture. And there's people that do storytelling here in that language. And, and it's really, really something to be proud of. So. Very spiritual. And they express themselves, you know, in their art, their music, uh, their cuisine. It's just a, a unique heritage. We're just happy sets of people. Cause the love. I'm proud of this place because people, like I said, people show love. That's the greatest thing. In, to me, the greatest thing in this world is you show love for one another. That's what, that's what it's all about. For Watch Fox News, I'm Alexis King.